Hey folks, welcome to today's video. I'm going to be comparing a rat trap with a Cotton Bear 110. Let me get set up, we'll get started. Alright, well I think everybody's familiar with a rat trap. It's, you know, <laughs> just a large mouse trap basically is all it is. I prefer the mouse traps or the rat traps that have this big nice platform as opposed to the old school ones where you put the bait in there and it was just a little metal thing. It's pretty easy to set. You know, you got a couple of springs that are held captive by these long, long arms. You just set it, like I said, a normal, like a normal mouse trap. And on these, you can slide the trigger stick or whatever one way or another to make it a heavier set or a lighter set. In other words, the pressure on this plate is either it either needs to be a little bit more pressure or a little bit less pressure, depending on where you you slide this mechanism in there. And there we have a set trap. Now, as you can see, this isn't stain. I mean, this <laughs> this trap has been used, and it's been used for years. I want to say it's probably, I'm going to guess, at least three years old. I have never um, had a problem with this particular one. I think out of about seven or eight traps, I've probably broken one of them. And it was just sometimes you'll get a defect in the springs. So I know a lot of folks have said in the past that sometimes these are more fragile than your Cotta Bears, and I would agree, it's, it's more fragile, but I still think it's a very viable trap. It's a trap that will last you years and years, okay? I don't think it's quite as fragile as some people make it out to, to be, but that's, that's just my opinion. Here we have the Cotta Bear 110. Now I should say, both of these traps are killing traps. I mean, I, I think that's pretty obvious, but I just want to I want to throw that out there. This works in where you know you've got a spring, you've got some trigger mechanisms. And I'll see if I can set this sucker with uh, snapping my hands, which is actually quite easy, but unless you are prone to repetitive injuries, kind of like I am. Okay, so. Whereas this particular trap, they walk on the yellow piece, get some bait from the yellow piece, and then it snaps. It's got its own, I call the thing, usually on a trap, something that snaps or is a force onto something. That's the hammer. And the anvil here would be the wood piece. So you, the, the animal gets squished basically between this metal wire here and the wooden piece. Whereas here, the animal walks through and triggers these little whisker hair trigger mechanism. I, I forget what they're called, but it's a trigger. It's not a big deal. The animal, if you put bait on there, that's great. If not, the animal, it's a blind set, which walks through there. And then both of these can be the hammer and the anvil all at once. In other words, the animal walks through, trips the mechanism, and then gets squished, and if it's walking through, depending on which way it's going, if it's going this way, it's going to get squished in the head and in the body, and vice versa if it's walking the other way. So is this a more durable trap? Absolutely, it's a more durable trap. And it is a little bit like comparing apples to oranges, but there is enough similarities in them that we can, we can kind of talk about the similarities and the pros and cons of each. The pros of this one is that it's, it's very easy to set, it's, it's lighter weight, it takes up less room in your pack, and it is easier to make an enclosure of some sort sometimes as opposed to this. In other words, I could set this out in the woods and I could build a box or make a cubby, so to speak, for an animal to walk inside of this and I don't have to worry about, all I have to worry about is this swinging arm going this way. I can make a very narrow entrance for this. Whereas this, I have to watch out for this particular spring mechanism. So I have to make a little bit of provisions for that. So those are the pros with this. The cons of this, it's not going to kill anything very big. I've killed red squirrels with it, I've killed weasels with it, and I've killed plenty of mice with them, chipmunks, stuff like that. I've never caught a gray squirrel in one. I think it would still do the job on a gray squirrel, but probably not as effectively as the conibear. 
and obviously with something like this you're not catching a rabbit. You can use this as a trigger mechanism for another trap, you know, and the sky's the limit with something like that. But this is for, I would say, maybe gray squirrel on down. I have seen a lot of po folks post about these traps and say that they're good for rabbits. Maybe they are good for some rabbits, and I did catch a rabbit in, in uh, I don't know if it was this one or not, but I made a blind set. It was really easy to track the rabbit because it was snow. It knew where this was because it took me about three days to finally catch the rabbit, and finally I was able to catch him, but he knew where this was. These, these animals, if you think that they're just blindly tumbling through the woods and don't know their environment, you should really get out and practice this stuff, even if you use a non-lethal method. Maybe even if you just set it up without, without setting the trap and then put like a piece of thread between here or something that only you know if it's been broke, if the animal actually will force its way through. Anyway, I caught that rabbit and I still ended up having to kill it. This is not a killing trap when it comes to anything bigger than a gray squirrel. That's my opinion. That's what I have experienced with my testing of this. It doesn't mean it's a bad trap. It's a very good trap. It's easy to set. It's more durable than this one. I said that already. It does fold up into a nice, you know, package, but it is a little bit heavier. And like I said, you'll catch a rabbit with it, but you're Unless you're very fortunate, you're not going to kill one. Unless it's a you know a, a, a quite a small a small one. I find that if I'm going to if I'm using this, I'm basically catching squirrels. It works great on gray squirrels. The spread of the jaws make it so that if you have bait right here and and, and I'm. I'm, I'm letting this spring out so you can kind of see the exaggeration. What I'm showing you is the distance between these jaws. If the animal goes through here, hits this little bait and this uh, trigger mechanism and does not stick its head through this end of the jaws, this end right here is what's going to kill it. If you're, if you're after like a little red squirrel, you can see the dimension here. Some, some of those red squirrels are only like you know, maybe six inches long, you're going to catch it on its hind quarters. You're not really going to do a humane, sometimes, killing um, of it. It's just, it's a bigger trap than like for a red squirrel or, or even like a weasel. I mean, if you get lucky, you're going to hit its head right there. Otherwise, you're, like I said, you're just going to hit its hind quarters. It'll stay, it'll, it'll kill the animal, but it's just, it's different than a rat trap. Something else I thought I'd show just real quick. This is uh, what is referred to as a weasel box. I think there's other names for it as well. I just used some scrap lumber and I nailed it together with no bottom. I can set this basically anywhere and the animal has to, you know, this would be on the ground. The animal has to jump up inside of there and then if I have my rat trap inside, maybe towards the back, the animal jumps in and if you look in the back here too, right here, I have a little screw that I've screwed through the back so I can kind of force meat or force bait in the back of this box and it, and it, won't, it won't go away and the animal actually has to try to work at it a little bit. So the little guy jumps through the hole here and goes, a lot of times I won't even bait this. This is just, you know, not really a blind set, but the bait is back here. So he walks across this large bait platform and gets smacked right there. So this is perfect size. You can see the distance between the jaws, basically. It's, a, it's quite a bit smaller, so I'm able to effectively catch those smaller animals. Like I said, I figure up to about a gray squirrel, as long as he wasn't a honking big gray squirrel. Either way, it's still going to take care of business. You could always, um, not that I'm afraid that this would, oops. Not that I'm afraid that the animal would be able to get through that hole or anything, but you could always attach this rat trap to the back of your box too. Then he's not just moving the trap through the woods. He'd actually have to try to move the box through the woods too if you got something larger. Anyway, this is an easy contraption to make. I can make something like this into the woods. In the woods, just make a small little cubby like that. And I don't have to 
make provisions for the spring on the side here, okay? That's not as good an application by any stretch of the imagination. And it's not a big deal, you just gotta make provisions for it. And I would set something like this, you know, you could do the same sort of thing. Make a little cubby set, they do that with mink boxes and stuff like that. I love this trap, I love these 110s. I'm almost leaning a little bit more towards this trap. If I was actually going to pack a trap for sustainability or, you know, quote, survival or whatever, I am leaning more towards a trap like this as opposed to this. This trap is very specialized. This is for basically gray squirrels, in my opinion. Gray squirrels, I know you can catch other things in it. I know you can catch weasels in it. I know you can catch mink, all sorts of different things. If you've got water, if you've got mink by you, almost everybody has squirrels and mice where they live. This is not gonna work on mice. Let's go check a setup that I have that I was actually trying to check, uh, catch a squirrel by my house. Let's see what we caught. Okay, right here I have a gravity box. It's a trailer, it's a gravity box. I keep corn in there, just field corn. That's how I heat part of my house. So whenever you have food like this around your house, you're obviously going to uh, have varmints. Okay, so I set a trap up right here. We put a little bait around the outside. Okay, and what did I catch? I caught a little mouse. I know it's not a lot of calories, but it's a little bit of calories. And you can see it caught him right where it should have, right behind the neck, broke his neck. So it's it's still good for these smaller animals. Shrews, mice, voles, whatever you want to call them. There's a lot more of these little animals out there than there are of the bigger animals. All right guys, just kind of a short discussion between the Conobear 110 and the rat trap. I love my Conobear 110s. I use them on leaning tree sets. I'll use them, you know, all over the place. But in my experience, it almost seems for this particular size, okay, for the Cotter Bear 110 size. I'm not talking about the 220s, I'm not talking about the 330s, I'm not talking about anything. I'm talking about this particular size trap and this particular trap. This can do a few more things, perhaps, than this trap, but I believe this trap will catch a wider variety of game and more of them than this one. In other words, I can catch mice all the way up to almost gray squirrels. This I can catch, I can catch basically the same amount of stuff, but not the mice. And I do have a feeling that some of these animals are gonna get away with a trap like this because some of the smaller animals, because the jaws are so much larger. So I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. I, I have seen in the past some folks saying that, that these are a little more fragile and they're not as good. They're definitely for two different purposes, but don't dismiss that. I think that's kind of basically the, the moral I wanted to throw out there is don't dismiss this trap. This trap is an awesome trap. I've caught a lot of things on this. I think the rat trap is a more versatile, it has a wider range it can catch a wider range of game. I've just, I have. I've caught more things on a rat trap than I have in this. And that's just been my experience. So I thought I'd share that. All right, guys, hope you liked the video. Take care.